This is Scott the Fixer Guy. Today we're dealing with a NXR oven door that doesn't close all the way. So we're going to be replacing the oven hinges or the oven uh, door springs. So in this model we have to pull back on two little locking tabs. I'm using a standard head screwdriver to just help pull these out. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers. You just want to bring these all the way down closest to the door. And then when you lift the door, it'll help pull the door out of its locking point. And then you just set it down so that you can work on it. To get the new hinges put in, here's the new ones with the springs. It's just a matter of removing a lot of Phillips head screws. So there's going to be three on this hinge plate that you have to remove. And there's two hinge plates on each side, so three screws for each hinge plate. And then there's going to be a bunch of Phillips head screws around the perimeter. And a lot of oven doors have the same type of arrangement for when you need to change the spring hinge assembly. And the reason you know you have to change it is the oven door doesn't close quite all the way. So as it heats up, a lot of heat is escaping coming up over near where the controls are for the stovetop for the burners so now we're just removing some of these perimeter screws in this model I think there were about 30 of them <laughs> just small little Phillips head screws just want to zip them out all the way around the perimeter. And these springs just get tired over time and they can't close the door far enough to really seal in all the heat. The problem with that is that it's hard for the oven to keep temperature and also some of that heat can damage the controls that uh, live up near where the burner controls are. It's common that when these hinges fail, if there's a LCD touchpad type keyboard, that that heat will destroy the keyboard. So it's kind of a cascading effect. The hinges get weak, or the springs get weak, the door doesn't close far enough, too much heat escapes, and then it destroys that touchpad and that's pretty expensive repair so it's good to keep an eye on this and make sure that your oven door can close all the way these hinges are available online and just need to know your model number and just look under the term oven door hinge or oven door springs So once you get all the screws out, you can separate the two halves. Might have to use uh, something to help you. I used a standard head screwdriver to act kind of like a pry bar to separate the two halves. And that'll allow you to easily replace the hinge assembly. You just take your time. Now that I've got them separated, I can reach in and pull the old one out. Make sure you don't accidentally install the old one again, so put that off to the side where you know that it won't be mixed up, because sometimes the old ones look pretty good. Here's the new one. So we're going to put that off to the side, put the new one in. And then once you get it in, you put the hinge plate back on. And then you want to just line up. There's going to be three holes. There's a hole in the hinge plate. There's a hole in the door frame. And there's a hole in the hinge assembly. You just got to line them up. And then you can put the screws back in.
sometimes what I'll do to help line up the screws is I'll put something to index the hole like uh, a small Phillips head screwdriver or in this case I'm just using one of these drivers and I'm going to line up this hole, line up all three of the holes and that will allow me to put a screw in here on the bottom. I can see that everything's lined up. So I'll put the screw in, get that one tight and once I get one of the screws in then everything will line up. So this is a pretty common way that you replace the hinges or oven door springs in a lot of models. What's a little bit different sometimes is how you take the door off of the oven. And usually if you look online according to your model number you'll see there will be a YouTube video that shows the procedure of how to get the door off. So now we're just doing the other side, same thing. We separate the two halves, pull out the old one, put the new one in, put the plate back on, use something to index the hole, the holes lined up, and then we'll put in one screw. And once you have that one screw in, you're all set. Then you can tighten the other screws that hold the hinge in, in position. We we'll make sure you get them all tight. And then it's just a matter of installing all the little side perimeter screws. So now we're just putting the two halves back together and we're trying to line up the holes on the two halves so we can put in all the little perimeter screws. And just take your time, be patient. There's a lot of them. You just want to make sure you get the holes lined up and then zip them all in. And then you will have an oven door that works again that has the spring tension to be able to close it all the way. So we're just putting in the final perimeter screws and that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.